That's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Mafi, the fourth film directed by the South African auteur uh, Oliver Hermanus. It premiered at the 2019 Venice Film Festival where uh, it played in the Horizon sidebar. Uh, it has since been nominated for uh, a BAFTA uh, for uh, Best Screenplay uh, between Hermanus and Jack City. Uh, it's based on the novel by Andre Carl van der Merwe, probably butchering that name. Um, IFC is releasing it in the U.S. April 9th, 2021. Are you familiar with this director's other work? Yeah, I've seen all three of his previous films. Um, his 2009 debut was Shirley Adams, and we were living in Minneapolis. I swore you were going to say Shirley Caesar. Go yeah, ahead. No, not Shirley Caesar, but she's got beans. Green. Um, Shirley Adams, that was back when we lived in Minneapolis, and uh, I remember going to the Minneapolis Film Festival and seeing anything that I could possibly stick it in any time slot, and so I randomly saw that film. Uh, which premiered, uh, competed in Locarno, uh, which is a, kind of a touching, low-key film. Uh, I really liked his sophomore film, Beauty, uh, from 2011, which you've seen. Um, what is it about? About that South African older man that's closeted but goes to all these secret orgies and he begins to develop an infatuation for, I believe it's a colleague's young, handsome son. I don't recall. Oh, you, okay. Uh, and then, of course, 2015's The Endless River, which competed in Venice. Um, oh, and for beauty, he won the Queer Palm at Cannes, played in certain regard. Um, yeah. Oh, and Mafia, I think it's important to note, is the Af Afrikaans... Uh, it's a six-letter word. It's the slur. The derogatory six-letter word. It's the slur for uh, uh, queer people. That's, Gay men that starts with the letter F. Yes, yeah. which I'm not afraid to say, uh, but for, you know, to be family-friendly, I guess. This movie is set in 1981 South Africa. Mm -hmm. So in the backdrop, the bordering nation of Angola, there's conflict between South Africa and Angola over communism. Yes, and, and, and I guess arguably apartheid. And apartheid. And we understand that in South Africa, all young men ages 16 and above are conscripted, mm -hmm. which means they're like drafted. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we find a young man named Nicholas mm -hmm. who is half, he has like a British passport. Like he's half British citizen or he's a British citizen. So he doesn't have to be drafted but he chooses to which isn't a point they really labor on it's kind of brought up infrequently but that is notable so he goes off to i guess we call it like boot camp sure and it's your standard like stereotypical boot camp uh uh not description but how boot camp is usually played out like the drill sergeant is awful it's a torturous experience demeaning trauma trauma yes Initially, Nicholas meets a another young man named Sax. Played by Michael Bay. Oh, and Nicholas is played by Kai Luke Brummer. And because we know it's a gay film, of course, the first thing we think is um, Sax is gay. We find out that he's not. He's just, of all the characters in this film, the most sort of uh, humane. He seems to be the only one who thinks that what they're doing in war and their... Um, <clears throat> thoughts about homosexuals is flawed. But Nicholas makes a friend in Sax. Like, Sax defends him against some other guy at one point. Um, there are two, what do you call them, like, battalion mates or other soldiers? I don't know what we call these guys. They're all in, like, boot camp. What do you, soldiers? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are two soldiers who end up getting caught performing a so, uh, under suspicion of performing sexual acts on each other and they are punished physically and then sent to something called Ward 22 mm -hmm. which is like a psychiatric unit mm -hmm. and when we see them they're like battered and bruised <clears throat> so shortly after that the drill sergeant assigns um, like this task where the guys have to dig a hole in like these trenches and then sleep in them overnight well, like as rain comes it's very cold and that's when we um, get more familiar with a character named Sutton. Stassen. Stassen. And Ryan de Villiers. And Stassen kind of makes a move on Nicholas by telling him, like, we should sleep in the same little, like, uh, sleeping bag or whatever to stay warm. We don't see anything happen, but it's obvious that they're sort of intimate. 
And when they see each other again, it's clear that Nicholas has some affection towards Stassen. Mm -hmm. Stassen sort of is cold towards him. There's like a scene where they're all playing volleyball and Stassen doesn't really seem that interested in Nicholas. That's also when Nicholas shares that he's never been. Because he's asking Stassen, what are you going to do over break? Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go to the beach. And Nicholas says, I've never been to the beach. And Stassen's not, like, inviting him to come with. Okay. The guys are in the barrack. Barracks? Barracks. And they're playing some game where they're, it's like spin the bottle, but whoever you land on, you have to, like, beat up. <laughs> so Nicholas gets Stassen and Nicholas and we'll describe I think what you because I think you're what you think that scene means I thought made a lot of sense to me but um, Nicholas hits Stassen and then Stassen like jumps on him and as they're fighting the drill sergeant walks in and punishes Stassen by not letting him go on break mm -hmm. and when everyone returns we find out Stassen was in War 22. Well, it's not no, it's not made clear, but Ron Valdi, we figured that out. Nicholas approaches one of the gay guys, or the ones, one, one of the ones who was punished and sent there. He asks him, it was Stassen there? And the guy says yes. And he's, like, drugged up and, like, to, like in another world. So, Nicholas completes his uh, term. His tour of duty. His tour of duty, or, I guess. Comes home. At first, we see him with his mom and her new husband, and that's sort of like whatever. Mm -hmm. They're having like lunch. Then Nicholas goes to visit his dad, which seems to be a much more pleasant experience for him. Then we see Nicholas go off to Stassen's parents' house. Yes. To, to visit with him, pick him up. They drive to the beach. They're like frolicking in the water. Stassen sort of makes a move on Nicholas underwater, and Nicholas kind of freezes. And we see Stassen... Um, sort of get flustered and say I'm going to go to the bathroom and walk away and that's the end of the film mm -hmm. so it's important to know that there is one scene after Nicholas realizes that Stassen is probably in War 22 where he Nicholas is like lying out like sunbathing and the drill sergeant who's like this complete asshole walks up to Nicholas and kind of just looks at him and shakes his head and I thought that meant that he's telling Nicholas Stassen died. Well, the, because the end of the film, I think, is just a dream. Yes, I, I agree with that interpretation. But the the real sergeant did that also because Nicholas had been very at first very heavily inquiring about what happened to Stassen. Right. So I think he, yeah. Anyway, what are your thoughts on this film? Um, I actually I did really like it. Um, I think it's a, a very beautifully made film. Um, I think that. There are portions of it that I think that are quite eloquent and moving, um, although, and uh, we'll probably get into this more, I, I find it, it, it is hard to feel empathy for, you know, these, essentially these racist uh, South Africans, which Hermanus does not stray away from. He makes several distinct choices, I think, to show that Nicholas is, you know, quite unformed in, well, one, being anti-racist for sure, like all of them at the time, but... Uh, also not uh, feeling too diminished about himself even to speak up for anyone else. Um, which I understand, of course, and psychologically that makes sense. But uh, again, it's hard to um, watch that and feel... Connected. Co conflicted about him as well. You know, because there, there are two scenes um, featuring uh, the abuse or murder of uh, black Africans. Uh, the first, the train stops at a and there's a, an older black man sitting and they all like, cajole and harass him and we see Nicholas just kind of looking on and it, it's only really through sacks do we get somebody's point of view that thinks that's all, all bullshit. Um, and then there's another scene uh, where there, there is actually wartime conflict and he's basically watching this black man that he shot die, expire before his eyes and he's, he's kind of inscrutable. Um, it reminded me of kind of early Verhoeven, uh, particularly uh, something like Spetters, uh, which also had a lot of, uh, depicted a lot of homophobia in the Netherlands, which people um, thought classified that film as homophobic, homophobic, which I disagree with. He's showing how people actually are and behaved. Um, but but it, it had that kind of vibe for me. I also think it was very well done. I did feel very disconnected from the the characters because... You know, also, it's like these racist 
uh, very attractive white men in this environment. But I also understand that there are those people, like this is not fiction. I mean, it is fiction, but I mean, these char these people do exist. So um, I don't want, like, like, I'm glad that the director didn't shy away from the reality. I just think for someone like me, I, I did feel very disconnected from these characters. Sure. I certainly had no, I, 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 I wasn't wishing that, you know, Nicholas, you know, uh, sort of comes to his, like, like finds his true self and is able to find love. Like, I, like, I just didn't care. Secretly, I was hoping it would be a film where he would fall in love with a, a black African man. But of or course, something but, like that. but also, you know, the, the, the rigidity of this culture in South Africa, uh, where, how would that happen? Sure. So, so it, it feels very accurate in its storytelling. So for that, I think it's great. Also, if you like seeing, you know, attractive men uh, without clothes on, this film has a lot of that. <laughs> Sure, um, and uh, you know, Nick, Kai Luke Brummer is striking. He kind of reminded me of uh, he could be related to the Swayze's. Who do oh, I thought he looked like uh, Pierce from a Memento? Oh, Guy, Guy Pierce. Pierce. Yeah, I could see that as well. Um, I, I really like the look of the film, shot by Jamie Ramsey, who Hermanus has used before. He's also just shot um, Motherless Sunday for Ava Husan, which will feature the uh, theatrical return of Glenda Jackson, which is a big deal to me. Um, there are a couple scenes that I thought were really well done, and one of them, so this is based on a book, but one of them is I read was based on uh, memory of Hermanus himself. There, there's a lot of water featured in this film, I think, as an element, and as opposed to, say, something like the sky, there's a really nice, um, somebody has uh, stenciled in one of the bunks, like, even birds are chained to the sky, which I thought was kind of moving, but it seems like... Uh, Nicholas's element is is water for a couple reasons, but after as he's leaving behind Stassen for the last time, Stassen kisses him goodbye, and he's kind of happy and smiling in his head as he leaves. And that the film then segues to a very painful memory of him as a child at this like oh that's right this like family entertainment swimming summer camp or something uh, like a, a swimming pool that people go to in the summer. My parents didn't do that. Uh, but he gets caught looking at a naked man in the shower and this man sees him and makes a huge deal uh, about it and uh, all the homophobic slurs happening and how like well done and traumatic that is. And I think many of us have had you know similar experiences confronted with that as children. Um, but apparently that was Hermanus himself. But I really liked how that was kind of the, the segue point uh, between Nicholas leaving and then coming back right away. Uh, and then, of course, the end, which I do believe is a, is a fantasy sequence where he drives off to Stassen's house, and they're both in this kind of, like, is it a grotto or a cove, kind of, adjacent to the beach, and only their heads are above water, so... And Hermanus is also showing us what's going on below water, as in, uh, from at the surface level, it looks like nothing's happening, but it shows Stassen reaching out for Nicholas, which I really liked, um, that kind of, the, the metaphor of that sequence. And the fight scene? The fight scene, uh, yes. Well, I took that as, you know, any, the only way that uh, straight men, closeted gay men can justify touching one another is through brutality and violence. That's the only way you can, that, that's kind of the version of physical affection. And I love that it is framed with spin the bottle. <laughs> yeah. as, as a mechanism for them to connect the only way they physically can publicly. Uh, which is, you know, also really depressing. Um, I really liked the score. I liked all the bits of classical music that were used. Um, it's just for what it is a very uh, elegant film, albeit, you know, familiar, especially if you are one to watch a lot of gay films. Again, if I'm watching films about gay white Nazis or gay white Republicans um, or gay white South Africans uh, in the apartheid era, it's hard to see gay people mistreated, but yes, at the same time, you have to keep in mind that there's this intersection there. Um, and, and I think that I really like that Hermanus keeps, gives that balance. What would you give this film? Um, I'd give it three and a half out of five. I would give it three and a half out of five as well. Anything else? No. Bye. Bye.